All right, folks, we've made it up to Denver, Colorado. Today is April the 19th, 2024. Tomorrow marks the 25th anniversary of the Columbine High School Massacre. In this video, I'm gonna take you over, show you the school, tell you the story. We're not gonna get every detail of it, but I'm gonna give you the gist of it for those who don't know. And I'm gonna take you over and show you the memorial. This community, trust me, from what I've seen today, still feels the pain from this massacre. Y'all stick around. So we're going to jump straight into this one. I'm going to give you all a bit of an overview on the two shooters. Um, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on them because I don't like doing stuff like that. I feel like it gives them glory, and that is the last thing I want to do on this video. But I do want to give you a little bit of an overview just to kind of give you a sense of what we're dealing with here. Okay, Eric Harris was born on April the 9th of 1981. Okay, He was born in Wichita, Kansas. The Harris family re relocated often due to the fact that his father was in the U United States Air Force. He was a transport pilot. His mother was a homemaker. She pretty much stayed at home, took care of the family, all those things. The family moved from Plattsburgh, New York to Littleton, Colorado in July of 1993. Now that happens to be the same year that his father retired from military service. The other loser in this story, co-conspirator, was a guy named Dylan Klebold. His full name is Dylan Bennett Klebold. He was born September the 11th of 1981. His parents were both pacifist and they attended the Lutheran church with their children. The whole family went to church together, everything I've read. Both Dylan and his older brother both attended confirmation classes and apparently that I'm not real familiar with the religion but apparently that uh, goes in line with the Lutheran traditions and just as his brother Byron uh, Dylan was also named uh, after a renowned poet in this case Dylan Thomas some little facts sometimes when you get into these things just kind of turn turn your stomach the wrong way that's one of them, I guess. Of course, his parents would have never known. But still, that's just one of those little things that get to me. Now, Claybold, he attended Normandy Elementary in Littleton, Colorado, for first and second grade, before he transferred to what they call here, it's called Governor's Ranch Elementary. And he became part of a program that they refer to as CHIPS. Now, that is the Challenging High Intellectual Potential Students Program. Now, like I said, I don't want to get too much into their story, too much telling too much about them. And I do have to say their names quite a bit in this because I have to distinguish who's doing what and all that. So excuse me for that. I'm going to give you all a little more background. We're going to try to move on. Okay. In 1996, Eric Harris was 15 years old. He created a private website on AOL. This website was initially set up to host what they call uh, first-person shooter games, such as Doom, Doom 2, games like that. Now, Harris went on to create a blog. Now, this blog's sole intent basically was to catalog and categorize his vandalism and mischievous actions. He would go out and raise hell in the neighborhood, shoot fireworks, vandalize things, and he was documenting it all on this blog. Now, these blogs I'm referring to they were what Harris referred to as rebel missions, okay? And the blog basically consisted a list of what was referred to as mission logs. Now, beginning in 1997, 
the blog postings begin to show the first real signs of Harris's anger against society and any type of governmental, basically any type of discipline that he would have to adhere to. It, it started turning negative towards that. By the end of that year, the site contained instructions on how to make explosives and weapons. Now, as you can imagine, this site, it attracted very few vis visitors. And oddly enough, it didn't really attract any notice, if you will, until August of 1997. Harris ended a blog and he detailed murderous fantasies, as it was described, with, and I quote this, all I want to do is kill and injure as many of you as I can, especially a few people like Brooks Brown. Now, Brooks Brown was a classmate of his. Now, after Brown's parents learned of this blog, they did report it to the local police department, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office here in Columbine. On August the 7th of 1997, that was reported. An investigator wrote a draft affidavit to request a search warrant of the Harris household. But that was never submitted to a judge. And I'm gonna say that every one of these stories that I do, there's always something like that. There's one place where this whole massacre, massacre maybe could have been prevented. And I think this right here is the, the uh, circumstance where it could have happened and that aggravates me. You know, people get alerted, people get warned, and nobody acts on it. I guess hindsight's 2020, I guess. Now, on January the 30th of 1998, that was the first time that Harris and Klebold were officially arrested. Now, they broke into a van in Littleton, and they stole uh, tools and computer equipment. They, so their, their punishment in this is they had to, they had to attend a hearing where they pled guilty to felony theft, okay? But remember, they're juveniles, so they got put in a diversion program, okay? As a result, both delinquents attended anger management and talked with diversion officers. These kids had so much more going on that I, I guess they just didn't realize, and of course, only if they had taken them seriously, you know? Now, if you ever look into this story, you'll read about all the journals and all the tapes and all the things that uh, they had written and recorded and all this stuff. I'm just not going to get into every bit of details on this because there's, there's a point in these stories where I get too close and I don't want to give these guys any type of recognition for the things that they did. And I would only pray that no one would ever watch one of these videos of mine for the wrong reasons. So I just don't want to go too deep into that stuff. It's out there. If you want to find it, you can. But it's, it, a lot of that stuff is listed on the kind of sites you have, really have to look for to find stuff like that. It's not really for public knowledge. So now we're going to jump straight ahead. I'm freezing out here. i got to tuck my arms in my pockets a little bit. Once again, I'm sorry we're having to film it this way, but it's, it's snowing and raining out right now. And if I stood out in this, it's a very, very wet snow. Um, it has died off a little bit. I'll insert a little snippet now. Of what it looked like earlier and y'all may not realize this and i wasn't going to say it in the video but this is the second time i've had to do this i actually recorded this whole video about 45 minutes ago and at the end of it i realized my microphone wasn't plugged in so now this is take two for the whole thing so i'm freezing at this point now they do state that at about 11 19 is when the uh, massacre started hate to use that word but that's when it started now, 17-year-old Rachel Scott and her friend Richard Castanaldo, hope I'm saying that right, they were having lunch sitting on the grass in the stairs on the west side of the building. I'll show you that in a picture right now. When Klebold came up and he threw a pipe toward the parking lot. Now, that pipe, they claim it as a pipe bomb in one story. Then I heard it was a smoke bomb in another. So, it, basically, it didn't explode. It popped and... Um, smoke came pouring out of that. Now the couple, I don't know if they were a couple, but the two kids there, 17 year olds, they thought it was nothing more than a senior prank. They didn't think much of it. And it wasn't shortly, it wasn't but shortly after that they heard gunshots and after that all hell broke loose. Now the two 17 year olds that I just described, they both were shot 
and I'm going to leave that right there. I'm not going to get into all of the, the grim details. I do want to go ahead and jump to 1122 uh, just a few minutes later, and police were, were arriving there at the west side of the uh, building. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to jump through this a little bit. I don't want to give these guys any glory. So we're going to jump up to about 1129 just a few minutes later. This is when Harrison Klebold entered the library. There were 52 students in the library at that time and two librarians. Now, as Harris and Klebold entered the door, they both yelled for everyone to get up. And that, that, that was yelled loud enough that you could actually hear it on a 911 call. And I searched for that call, that recording, and I couldn't find it. Now, as they made their way around the library, uh, they were making comments to some of the victims there in the library, like, quit your complaining, quit your griping, using cuss words that I'm not going to use here today. And they were saying things also like, everyone's going to die today. We're going to blow this place up. They even went around to some of the tables and peeked underneath the tables where people were hiding, seeking refuge, and said peekaboo playing games with these people and they weren't just playing games and walking away the people they initiated like that unfortunately were some of the deceased victims so shortly after they had uh, reigned terror there in the library for a while uh, it doesn't say exactly how long they were in the particular library but they ended up leaving the library they were gone for about 30 minutes and they came back and everybody from the library that was that could had fled only the victims that were deceased uh, still lay there and a couple of the injured that couldn't get out but the police were able to engage them at this point and um, there were several you know for several minutes they went back and forth shooting at each other and at 1208 it was said by one of the bystanders that both Klebold and Harris both counted down 321 and they committed suicide at the same time there apparently was one loud boom that went off at the same time so that last little bit of the video there was my favorite part where well, these two psychos finally met their demise. Now, as you can see, I'm standing out in the, sh out in the snow. I had to get out here and do the video my way just a little bit. I wanted to kind of concentrate on the other part of it. But uh, this, this part of the video here, we're gonna take you to the memorial. And I'm gonna show you that. Now, I did film that a little bit earlier today. I talked to several people in the community here. This, this community is still in pain. One of the people I talked to was actually a student at the school at that time in the ninth grade. She did not want to be on the video, but she told me explicit details about how this community still uh, is in pain. And, and she has tons of friends that obviously were at school with her that day. And they meet up relatively regularly and they discuss it. And it's one of the things that they've been through that only they can talk about and only they can uh, really relate to because it's something they went, they went through together. Now I'm starting to freeze. So we're gonna to cut to the uh, memorial now. Hope y'all enjoy that part of the video. I'll bring y'all back as soon as we're done.
with that, folks, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you all so much for coming and watching this. You see what I put into these sometimes. This is a rare exception. This is pretty bad. I didn't plan for this. I've had this trip planned for almost a year. It was 72 degrees here two days ago. But with that, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you all for uh, watching my video today. I appreciate it more than you know. Go to my Instagram, Big Bake on the Move, and check me out there. I'll put the link at the bottom of the screen right now. And uh, I'm not going to get wordy today. I'm freezing, and I kind of want to get back in the car. The camera's shaking a little bit. I do want to send out prayers to all the victims, the survivors, the community. Anyone, you have prayers coming from me. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put Columbine in my prayers tonight. And I do have a prayer list that I pray to every night. And uh, with that, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you all so much for you all support. Hit me in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you all next time. All right, bye.